So you spent a little bit of time in finance. And then this is a lot of my questions are going to be about the points when you decide to change career, because sure. as someone who's just about to enter the workforce, I'm thinking, OK, how long will I stay in one role? When will I know that it's the right time to leave? And so when you had spent um, the 90s in finance, when did you then decide that it was time to do something else and go pursue a career in basketball? Because I think I read somewhere that you realized you'd be taking a significant pay cut. It would be a different right. way of life. So why was it the right time again for you to then leave finance and go into so, basketball? So Falar, and I would say, you know, when I first got in there, I had no idea what investment banking, sales and trading, I didn't know the finance, I didn't know the institutional finance um, enterprise at all right? The only thing I knew about finance coming out of Princeton was I had a bank account at Princeton and how to write checks and things like that. I knew that, you know, you had to get loans to buy a house, that kind of stuff, but that was the extent of my expertise. And then once I got involved and I saw the vast amount of capital that was going through the system and how much money you could make, I, I was like, I'm in this for, I'm in this for, for real, right? And, and so right away, being coming from the place I came from, I couldn't see that sustaining for a long period of time, right? That's what happens when you grow up without a whole lot. You think, okay, you have this opportunity, you got to take advantage of it because this is going to go away. So I had always had the plan of working as long as it took me to pay for my house, to pay for my, you know, expenses, you know, pay off my student loans and all that kind of stuff save up enough money for my kids college education and i was i my plan was to then at you know whatever age it would have been 45 50 to teach seventh grade and coach high school basketball that was my sort of exit plan now there wasn't a i didn't have a dollar amount like a lot of people do today because i didn't know to have a dollar amount right i just had a plan and I knew I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be in, encumbered with a whole lot of debt. And I figured as long as I was debt free, I could do anything. I could, I could make 25 grand or I could make 250 grand, but I knew I'd be okay as long as I didn't have this, this uh, dark cloud of debt hanging over me. So, so that was my plan. So I'm on my way to sort of fulfilling that goal and and, and you'll see when, once you hit Wall Street, the bulk of your compensation comes in a year end bonus. So each year your bonus is different. So, but you, you know, you kind of have an idea what you're going to make. And so I spent like 13 years just socking away money. And I was, I, I wasn't anywhere near the, the point of, okay, this is the right time. But an opportunity presented itself to me when when coach Bill Carmody, who was a former assistant coach at Princeton, got the head coaching job at Northwestern, he offered me an assistant coaching job at a division one school. Now, you have to remember in the back of my mind, I was thinking I would coach in high school and high teach school, seventh yeah. grade. <laughs> this was like getting the Morgan Stanley job of coaching earlier than you expected. So I had to make a decision on leaving or, or, or ch ch I shouldn't say leaving, changing my plan from being completely debt free and having a, you know, a pile of money in the bank to should I take this risk and, 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 um, and, and do something that I've dreamt of doing and that was coaching. And so needless to say, I made the decision to coach. And as you mentioned, it was a huge, you know, it's a huge difference from being, you know, uh, uh, an investment banker and you go to being an assistant basketball coach and every one of my friends thought I was having a nervous breakdown but actually <laughs> it was part of a bigger plan and there were no guarantees that I could have I, I would have been successful and and all that stuff but it was something that my I, my dad always said if you can find a job that you love doing it won't feel like a job and he was absolutely right. And that's why I really took the, the risk to do it. And, uh, and, and was, was it, it just turned out well for me uh, after that. But that was sort of the, the, the process of my decision because it was based on a plan. Like all Princeton folks, I had a plan for the future. And then these opportunities come out of the, out of the woodwork 
because you have gone to a place like Princeton and, you know, you have to decide whether to take advantage of them or not. 